What's up? It's your boy ET. Look, if you're looking to or you got to raise the bar on your marriage, you gotta you gotta click the link and get into married in the crazy, y'all. I'm telling you, this coaching is gonna take your relationship to another level. Now look, you already know you need to raise the bar. You know that already. So stop thinking or overthinking and click that link and marriage in the crazy is gonna take you and your spouse to marital bliss. Now you know, click the button. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of the Married Into Crazy podcast with Snooks and Levy. I'm Levy. I'm Snooks. And we hope that everyone's had an amazing holiday season, um, whatever you're celebrating. Today is the first day of Kwanzaa. It's the day after Christmas. We hope you had a wonderful Christmas. For those of you that celebrate Hanukkah, hope you're having a great Hanukkah. Um, but the bottom line is every holiday that we talk about, it's about family. It's about love. It's about coming together. And we are committed to sharing a variety of different versions, variations, takes on that love, that coming together. And I just want to say we're happy to say that we have an amazing couple that we've rescheduled 13,000 times. <laughs> <laughs> to actually, and it's not just it's not just on our guest fault. I mean, we've rescheduled it. It's been going back and forth. Life is busy. Mm -hmm. But we bring you couples that make time in this busy life for each other. And so today we want to welcome Lauren and Charmaine Wilder. Hey, hey, hey. Hey guys. Yeah. Hello. Well, it's great to have you. Uh well, great to be on the show <laughs> for sure. Um as you just remember you scheduling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. hey, look, you know, I appreciate it. So, you know, I don't do, I'm, I've, we're never really big in intros, like, okay, oh, and reading a bio on the individuals. I always leave it to the individuals to kind of say, because when we read stuff, it's generally, you know, what everybody says, oh, this is, these are all the things. It's really like a laundry list of all the things we've accomplished. But when we let our guests kind of introduce themselves, what what's important to them truly comes out. Mm, that's so good. I love for you two to kind of introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a little bit about who you know Lo and Charmaine are. So let me let me just say this before you guys get started. Um, I like to ask questions, so I might interrupt you because I, I need more detail. So I'm just giving you that disclaimer that I might be like, okay, hold on, back up a little bit and tell me more about. So go ahead. Mm -hmm. All right, yes, yeah, Charmaine Walder. I'm a wife, a mother. A woman of faith. Uh, by profession, I am a licensed mental health counselor. Uh, and that's me. <laughs> PhD, Dr. Wilder. I was, uh, uh, it's, 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 new. it's new, but she she likes to be humble about it. I'm like, you, you're, you got your PhD now, babe. So Dr. Wilder. Dr. Wilder. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let me read the <laughs> yes, We don't yeah. leave that out. Let me do my snap. <laughs> We don't leave that yeah, out. Right, yes, right, yes, right. yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, Lauren Wilder, everybody knows me as Lo. Um, and so I am a father, a husband, um, and I am a sales professional. Uh, and I'm doing wonderful things in the community. I just have a heart and a passion for helping uh, at promise youth discover their raw potential so that they can achieve at a high level. Um, and I just love my wife, my son. And we're just here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, so pretty much that's that's who we are and, and man of faith as well. So yeah, yeah, you know what? Two things. Number one, Lo, I love how you said at promise youth. I I, yeah. I, I take that up too. I like that too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The world needs to pick up on that mm -hmm. because what we speak, we speak power. Mm -hmm. And we can speak power into negative things and we can speak power into positive things. And I love how you said at promise. Yeah, absolutely. Man. Yeah. I'm writing it down. Yeah, shout out, shout outs to my uh mentor uh in the game changers uh program because at at risk youth, that's the, the term that a lot of people use. Mm -hmm. But you know, they these these young students um have so much promise and so much purpose inside. Mm -hmm. So uh, allowed me to help work on that. So yeah, it's mm -hmm. uh it's definitely uh, a better view. And speaking life to them for sure. Absolutely, I, I love it. This. You I know, love it. and that it's funny because Doctor, I'm Doctor Wilder. Um, 
<laughs> we're going to put that out there. So Dr. Walder, yeah. uh, with you being a mental health professional, what is your particular focus? Because I know there's a variety of different directions you can go when it comes to mental health. I have a wide range. I work with young folks as well as adults. So I don't have a particular niche. Uh, so I have a wide array of different clientele that I would normally see. Um, before the little one came along, normally it would be younger uh, adults um, and younger kids that I would see. Interesting. You know, we just had um, another mental health professional on and um, talking about like SAD, right? The seasonal affective disorder and some of the disparity between, you know, the happy times we celebrate Christmas and everyone's happy and joyous and but it's also a season of depression for many as well, where it becomes really prominent. Um, so it's really interesting. We, I did not know that, that you were in that profession. We're going to have you on later on as a <laughs> in-house professional. That's it. <laughs> so I'm going to beat Snooks to the punch. So you're in ATL. We want to know, how did you two meet each other? How did, how did Charmaine and Lauren become Mr. and Mrs. Wow. Okay, I tell the story. She, all right. So uh, very interesting. A um, few years ago, a friend of mine uh, reached out to me. I was watching football, man. Sunday football, just hanging out. Um, and I got a text and he was like, hey, I want to set you up on this blind date. And I wasn't I was like, man, I'm really not interested in doing that right now. Uh, but as I'm just contemplating there, just, just kind of going back and forth on, you know, how do I want to respond to this text message? I uh, I just felt something in my spirit said, go ahead, you know, take take this chance. So um, her sister and my friend came together and set us up on a date, you know, two professionals, you, you know, single and just really good people. And as as many people know, when you're out there and you're doing everything right, it's kind of hard to date because you can't, you know, you, you're not sure who um, people are. And so anyhow, we, we set up a, a blind date. And uh, we met at Carabas, mm -hmm. um, and right off the bat, we just connected and the conversation, we were just talking about this um, over the holidays, yeah. the conversation was just so high level. We were having conversations that people typically have six months, a year down the road. Um, and I just felt really, really good about um, about her. And, and so, um, yeah, we got set up on that and then went on many dates uh, after that. But we got uh, the interesting thing is uh, after what, about a couple of weeks? Yeah, well, let me say this oh, yeah, too, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it was my first blind date. Mine's too. Mine too. Um, you know, I was heavily in the church, uh, active in the church, active in the community, um, you know, busy as a single woman, embracing my singleness. Uh, and so casual dating wasn't me. I, I didn't believe in dating just to date. Um, I believe in the value of time. So I was very intentional about time that I invested. Um, so when my sister proposed a, a blind date, I knew I could trust her because uh, the character of my sister. So there was a whole vetting process yes. that she put him through. <laughs> and so when we had our first date, you know, I look at body language like the whole nine because you could talk a good talk and I, I'm not worried about what you're talking because words are words, right? If if it's just words. So I was looking at the body language, his posture. I mean, as he was speaking, I could tell that there was something of substance with him that was worth my time um, and intention. And our dates weren't just, okay, what's a nice restaurant or, um, oh, this is a nice movie. We were having those tough, difficult mm -hmm. conversations and topics that need to be discussed. Yeah. You know, what, what is your credit score? What, <laughs> what is your, what is your, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Uh, what are your values? Getting to know this person. Um, and so those were the topics and discussions that we were having on these dates that Typically, people take years to have. Um, so, and let me and let me uh, now kind of speak lightly about the vetting process. Uh, <laughs> listen, her sister was like thorough. I thought I was like interviewing for a government job. <laughs> I was like, so so that's what really intrigued me. I'm like, okay, this woman must be special. 
because I'm, I've never been asked these variety of questions. And, <laughs> and, and so I knew right then and there, like, okay, this is, this is going to be interesting. And like she said, the conversations was just like, just again, high level, uh, spiritually, we were speaking, um, you know, from the spiritual, uh, from our future goals. And we talked mm-hmm. about real estate business, all of that. And, um, and I'm not going to lie. Uh, I was a little nervous with the, with the credit score, uh, <laughs> And and I thought your credit score is your character score. Okay? It, it, it's true. <laughs> yeah, which is true. Now, and I was well over 700, but yeah, I was good. I was nervous. Like I was like, man, hopefully I'm not at 850, right? So, <laughs> and uh, and so yeah, we we connected and, and it was a good good vibe. And one day I'm in I'm in prayer in my prayer, and I heard the Lord speak to me and said, uh, I have delivered your wife. And I thought that was interesting because for me before this it was like, I needed a five year process, like of vetting myself to make sure like, this is going to be my wife. And basically the Holy Spirit was like, that's not going to happen. Okay. If you think you got five years, she's, she's gone. And and (laughs) you need five years to determine if I'm your wife, I'm not your wife. your wife. So I knew then and there, I had to switch, switch it up and trust him, but also to be mature and, and to, to take a leap of faith. And so as I had this, you know, conviction, I wanted to share with her. And then she had a dream Mm -hmm. that she wanted to share the dream that I was her husband. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, wow, this is after a few weeks of dating. Mm -hmm. And so um, I told her, I said, well, I know you're my wife, so I know I'm going to marry you. And um, so she started asking like, okay, well, let's, what would it, what would that process look like? And I said, well, it depends what kind of, what kind of wedding do you want? Um, the twenty thousand dollar wedding, and immediately she said, "That's a house." <laughs> so I was like, "Yes, Lord." <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, we um, we went to Zales. We we picked. She picked out the ring, and we got engaged. Not this with, is the uh, upgrade. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> the upgrade. Yeah, we went and got the ring um, a few weeks after dating, yeah. and got married four months um, from our first date. So I believe from the conversation we had, we got y'all beat. <laughs> oh, hands down. <laughs> Funny. That is yeah. no wonder he was like, yeah, just wait till, you know. Yeah, wait till you hear the, the story. Y'all four months, okay, you got engaged. Yeah, we'll clap for that. Just wait <laughs> till you are. No, okay. we, were, we, were, we were at the altar in four months. Mm-hmm. That's um, amazing. Yeah, yeah. I will, and, uh, I will yeah. say this, that if, if if she checked my credit score at the time, we wouldn't be here now. <laughs> <laughs> and if, hey. if your credit score is your character score. That's that's valid because back then, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, was, there was character development that was taking place. I was about to say, but you know, over time, it it, it did. Well, y'all were y'all were younger too, weren't you? Like you were a little bit younger. Yeah. Little, so yeah. so we were yeah. Yeah, we at our age. <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah. I was I was yeah. 33 30 yeah, yeah 33 was she was 37 yeah so, so you know certain phases in life you should have grown and evolved mm-hmm. especially you know at that age so you know if he's at that age and single and can't manage him as one person mm-hmm. you can't manage a wife and a family that's at least my perspective at that time you know, in your twenties, you're still coming into yourself. Listen, you if she would have met me at 26, yeah, we wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I was ready either. Yeah, everything's yeah. about timing. It is. You know, it's definitely about timing, and and again, you have to go out there. A lot of people are it's God's time. They're they're afraid to take them chances because of previous experiences. And so for us, we were like, you know, when you know when you talk about love and you talk about marriage. You're really gonna have to get out of your comfort zone and be vulnerable and and being open to change because you become one. It's a lot of adjustments there, but you definitely have to trust trust the process. Also, I think in our culture, it's so care it's so um easy to get caught up in superficial yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. We we're so um, I don't want to be sound church like and say carnal minded, but we look so much on the outside we invest so much on the outside and if we took some of that time that we invest on the outer appearance 
and take that same investment on the inner person, I think some relationships can can be healthier. Um, I think we're just so focused on the wrong things mm -hmm. that really is not conducive for a healthy, long lasting relationship. I agree with that. It is so funny that you, you say that. Not really funny, but it's, it's like um, the first time you say, oh, I met someone or I met the first question that someone typically asks is what did they look like? What exactly. were they wearing? What kind of car did they drive? I mean, exactly. all the exterior, like you're mm -hmm. saying, the superficial mm -hmm. things, you know. Yeah. So I think that's um I think that's great that you bring that up. And also I love how both of you were even obedient in listening the discernment that you had, because mm -hmm. you could have passed the dream off as it's a coincidence. Or mm -hmm. you could have thought, oh, maybe I didn't hear that, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I think, um, I'm not even sure that, I know I've said it before, but when Lovey and I, when we met, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to marry this guy. But I was still in that space where I don't feel like wasting my time, you know, because mm -hmm. I feel these these things. But what if it's a waste of time? And I was at work, and I went over to my friend's desk, and I was like, let's just pray real quick. because. I want to make sure that this is right. So everything that I prayed about when I came back to my desk, he had called and left me a message on the phone and he addressed everything that I said in my prayer. I was like, okay, all right, Lord, I heard you the third time, you know. Right, right. <laughs> Beautiful. God, I, I bugged her desk. So I knew she was. <laughs> no, but you know, it's, it's, what's really cool is that you two, what's the you two? I'm talking about Charmaine and, and Rana you had people rocking for you. You went to your girlfriend to sit there and, and, and have a conversation about mm -hmm. let's pray. Yes. About you had a prayer warrior that was going to stand in the gap for you and pray with you and over you and for you. And you're talking about your sister that was vet in the vetting process that was vetting low. Mm -hmm. And that that's a very important point that I hope the audience is picking up on that. It's, you need to surround yourself with individuals that aren't just going to be there. A lot of times, mm -hmm. oh, we're going to the club, or we're going to go here, or whatever. We're going to meet some people, and they were very intent on making sure that their sister, their sister mm -hmm. in Christ, their sister in, in biology, their sister in in love, just wanted to look out for you and made sure that they were rocking not just with you but for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And to expound on that, I think it's important to take you know self inventory, self assessment not of, only of yourself, but then also assessment of those around you. Mm. You know, look at the caliber of individuals that uh, you are attracted to and they are attracted to you. Um, and if you find certain deficiencies in them, it's probably in you too. Mm. Um, what is being attracted to you? What are you attracted to? Um, so that's something that I think is important for every individual to, to really look at your circle. What are the caliber of individuals you consider as friends right. or your support um, and really do, do an assessment. It does that align with where you see yourself in the future. Is that what you want to be? Is that who you are or who you want to be? Mm. Um, so I think that's important. No, that's good. The doctor just wrote a prescription y'all. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Hey, you know, some of the, the stuff our parents told us, it's funny, you know, we always say, oh, we, darn, I just said something, I sound like my mom, or I sound like my dad. <laughs> I mean, they really did tell us. I mean, I think all of us in some fashion or form heard, show me your friends, and I'll show you who you'll become. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. You, know, you got these, these these motivational speakers talking about, you know, show me the five people you hang around with, and I'll show you where you're going to grow to when it comes to business, finances, what have you, because you're only going to be the average of the five people you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, that comes that's very true when it comes to marriage and even after marriage mm -hmm. you know the circle that you have around you do you got people that are rocking for your marriage mm -hmm. or you got you know for the covenant or do you have people that are just like oh i'm down for low because we go way back and right. if his girl's tripping then you know we I'm, I'm, i got his back yeah and that's not the kind of i mean everybody needs a ride or die but that's not the kind of ride or die you need you need somebody that says like yo me and low go way back and if he starts tripping, a low tripping right now. So when it comes to marriage, I'm a check. Him. <laughs> right, right. No, that's true. That's absolutely true. And and it's funny because you, you start to take the inventory of those that you're surrounding yourself with and asking, like, 
you know, I remember when we were writing down the guest list for the for the uh, for the wedding, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, there. I realized there that okay, these people aren't going to be, you know, the people that I'm writing and I'm inviting to the wedding are those that I see myself having a future with, mm -hmm. right? Those friends that I know we're going to be able to have them over. Like we recently just had mm -hmm. some of my my best men and my and my groomsmen mm -hmm. here with their wives and their kids mm -hmm. when we hosted them a few weeks back. Those are the people and the relationships that we're going to have. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's key. That's key. And, and hopefully the audience is listening to that. Like, make sure you surround yourself with people that have the same values, same principles as you or things that you aspire to become. And this, and it's okay if, if you have to walk through a season alone mm -hmm. until God send those right people. Because sometimes you do need that, that season to be alone, to, to work on oneself. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, you know, as individuals, we feel like, you know, we can't do this by ourselves. We can't go here by ourselves. We need someone around us, but love yourself. It's, mm -hmm. it's okay. In my singleness, listen, uh, when I would go to the restaurant, they're like, how many you pray? One, one, <laughs> yes, just one. <laughs> I was comfortable with me. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's okay to embrace those season when you're one, yeah. um, when you're, it's just you, an individual, till God bring those right connections along. That's true. See, I love that. I think a lot of our single, because we have a lot of people that are single that are listening or that are in that, that stage of they have a significant other, but they haven't quite turned that corner yet. And mm -hmm. I mean, that's just sage advice. And, and yeah. you, you both remind me of my one of my favorite lyrics by Chance the Rapper. You know, I don't want you at, you know, if you can't be there, I don't want you at my wedding if you're not going to be there for my marriage. Mm. And, and I think that just speaks volumes about, again, creating that, what we call an iron tribe. You know, mm -hmm. Proverbs 27, 17, and it talks about, you know, as iron sharpens iron, we think as iron sharpens iron, we as couples should sharpen mm -hmm. each other as well. That's mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. good. It's real good. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so tell me, um, what about marriage? Let me. How do I say? Ask this question. So, what is it about marriage that you've learned about yourselves? Does that mm -hmm. does that right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you go first. When I was single, it was good to have the strong, independent. I'm good by myself. I could do this by myself. When I transitioned into being a wife, into that covenant, no one told me that type of mindset or perspective would be toxic, <laughs> you know, in a marriage. As Ernie sips on his <laughs> So I had to go to that, go through that process mm. of being refined and knowing that it's okay to be vulnerable. I don't have to be strong all the time. I could fall back and let my husband take the lead because I was so used to taking the lead, doing this, doing that. So I had to learn um, that that place of, of being refined um, in our relationship and just not having to be so dominant and so strong. And that was a process. That was really a process that I had to really allow the Lord um, to really remake me that process where the two becomes one, mm -hmm. that becoming is truly a process over time. Um, and so that is something that I had to learn um, about me in our relationship as a marriage. She was a scrum <laughs> black woman. <Yeah. laughs> a hey, strength recognized strength. Hey, that's that's it. And, and at times I was like, Lord. <laughs> this woman you've given me, <laughs> but you know, for, for me, um, it was really about, um, really understanding where she was and what she needed. And I had to adjust to that as well, mm -hmm. because I was someone who was like, it's my way, it's my way. And so I learned a lot about myself. And another thing she helped me realize as well was just having emotional intelligence mm -hmm. um because there was a lot of things that mm -hmm. i would just brush to the side and 
and not really understand how I was feeling or what that situation, what it really did to me. So um, I really learned a lot about emotional intelligence and started to get more in tune with what I was going through yeah, and feeling. uh, my feelings. Yeah. Right. And so, and now, now that I am aware of that, I can love better. I can be a better husband. I can be a better father. I can be a better leader um, because I am, uh, you know, in tune. in tune with that. So, and it also helped me even in my, in my profession. And I realized there was things that, um, that I was learning at home that now I can, I can implement at work. So, and that's, that's balanced me out and, and maybe better. So mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah. That's really good. That's good. It just makes me think about how, you know, there's that old book, you know, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. <laughs> and, and, it, and it talks about certain things that I think are, are quite valid. But when it comes to the male masculinity, mm -hmm. you're talking about you had to get in touch with your emotional intelligence. And I, I have to, because I know that my, my, my shortcoming when we got married was that I was, I was a pleaser, right? I was trying to please everyone around, keep everybody happy. Mm -hmm. But in doing that, there's a shallowness mm -hmm. um, that goes along with that. And I just think that we get away with men so often get away with being shallow because we have these base emotions you know anger happy celebration whatever you know but it's it's that and we keep it moving we always like to men in general have a tendency to brag about how yeah me and my boys we can get into a fight and then the next minute we're good mm -hmm. whereas the women you know you get into something it's gonna take some months <laughs> to repair you know, whatever just went down process it <laughs> right and we'd be like ah whatever but it's because we don't really get into the depths of the emotions and understanding and the things that are required for us to be there emotionally for our spouses. Mm -hmm. And what? <laughs> it's so funny how, you know, time, we, over time we grow, we evolve, we change. And when Lovey was saying that, I was just like, dang, Lovey from 26 years ago would probably pass out at love you right from now because he don't try to please nobody now he's like <laughs> id what okay no this is what we're doing <laughs> right right I, I learned to operate my strength <laughs> right that superpower you tapping in <laughs> no but i think it's beautiful because it's about evolution right and right. i love that you had such an in-depth conversation up front when it came to your relationship even before there was no relationship it was a discovery process yeah mm, exactly but it's funny how those seeds that were being planted have allowed you to really flourish and grow. Mm -hmm. The other part about that too, um, I could I could speak to you, Charmaine, as far as like where you were coming from, that being independent, being very strong, being self uh, reliant. You know, that was one of the things that our challenge in the very beginning too. I I tell everyone I was raised by a single woman. My mom did not teach me. I did not see uh, what being a wife looked like. It was mm -hmm. always ingrained in me. You have your own. You don't depend on anyone. And, you know, so I I, hmm, I wore that with like a, a purse, a jacket, <laughs> and some gloves. It, it's not <laughs> all easy, you know. But I, I think that is important to hear how not allowing yourself to be vulnerable, to trust your husband, because at the end of the day, for me, I, I think I realized that it was more about me being able to trust that number one, he's going to make the right decision or number two, he's going to make the decision that I want him to make. You know, um, we have to be able to shed that before it causes harm in our marriage. Lovey takes a lot of responsibility for the things that happen early. But I, you know, I tell him, I say, as I matured, I realized that day. I had a huge part to play in how we got to the event of year four, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just really, like you said, I hope people are listening. Be okay with uh, trusting and opening up. And, you know, we look at that word, especially I feel like for uh, Black women, we don't do submission very well mm -hmm. because of the way that submission was taught to me was mm -hmm. I'm submissive. I, that means I'm subservient, you know? you're the master over me, you do what I say. And it was always kind of projected that way. But right. as we said before, it's never anything like that. When you're in a relationship and you're in together, the, the weakness that is love and be loved is not 
a slave and master or anything right. like that. So if we could get that early, I think we would mm. be about five steps ahead of yeah. common folk. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. those are good points. But, but with that too, um, obviously you have to make sure that you, you're with the right person. Exactly. Because because some people can take that and abuse it in the way that mm -hmm. you're, you're saying. So that's why I think the vetting is important. Um, so if you're single right now, you're dating, you know, be intentional when you're dating. Don't just date casually and making sure that you're asking those questions. Now, I remember someone gave me some sound advice early in my single days and said, if there's something that is bothering you now, it's only going to magnify over mm -hmm. the course of time. And so making sure that you you're clear with whatever it might be, you know, you get it out out the way, because that can be something you find out year four or five of marriage and you're like, man, it's a deal breaker, you know, so that's just it's really important. And um, and I'm just grateful that we were able to have those conversations. And that's when we knew, like, yep, this is this is my significant other. And, and we had to grow, you know, at the time when I was she talked about her single days. I was enjoying my single days for sure. As far as working on myself, you know, mm -hmm. the, the the naps, um, you know, I was very involved in the community. I was in the Rotary Club, tied again. I was doing all these different things and I had to scale back um, so that I can, I can be a good uh, partner. But what happened was, you know, when you realize like this is the woman or this is the man that I want to marry, then those sacrifices and those things that you have to let go, they just they just happen. But again, you got to trust that you're with the right person. Let me pick it back off that too, because you know during that vetting process and that vetting stage, sometimes we like to ignore red flags, mm -hmm. thinking, yeah, yeah. "Oh, maybe this will change down the road," or "I can change that," or yeah. "I can." That's it. Yeah. <laughs> or I can change this person. Yeah. Um, you have to know what your boundaries are, uh, what your non-negotiables are. Um, if those are ambiguous to you as an individual, then you can't really blame the per other person for mm -hmm. what you allow. Um, so you have to know what you're willing to tolerate, what your non-negotiables are, what you're looking for. Um, and be okay with with that. Um, and I'm talking about the core value of of what makes a person an individual. You know, if there are certain red flags, you know, I'm not keeping their word, I'm not faithful. Um, you know, what are you willing to take? Um, and so if you're seeing that in in that single, in that dating stage, and you're and that's what you want as far as a long-term marriage, then yeah. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. so that's no, just that's something good. to consider. That's good.